Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. Today we're gonna to talk about something that is oh so important to understanding the cardiovascular system, cardiac blood flow. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And it will be really important that as you draw, you also draw where I draw. So taking your pen, go to the bottom of the page and draw a set of four quadrants or a big plus sign. These quadrants should remind you of the four chambers of the heart. So let's go ahead and label those four chambers of the heart. Remember that we can divide these into either top and bottom or right and left. So if we were to think about this in terms of top and bottom or superior and inferior pairs, we have the two atria, which is plural for atrium, and the two ventricles, which is plural for ventricle. The right side of the heart carries deoxygenated blood and the left side of the heart carries oxygenated blood. And if the right and left isn't clear to you, remember that it's always the patient's left and right. So we imagine that if this is the patient's heart, the patient is lying on the table on their back. And so we're looking down at the chest. So this would be the patient's right side and the patient's left side. So let's go ahead and just label the chambers of the heart. Because the right side represents deoxygenated blood, we want to use our blue pen. So we're going to label the upper chamber, the right atrium, and then the lower right chamber is going to be the right ventricle. The left side of the heart carries oxygenated blood, so we want to use our red pen. So this will be the left atrium, and then likewise, the left ventricle. We're gonna look at blood flow from the right side of the heart receiving deoxygenated deoxygenated blood. So I'm just gonna arbitrarily choose the superior vena cava, I'm gonna abbreviate that SVC, and the inferior vena cava, IVC, as our starting points. So remember that superior vena cava is going to receive deoxygenated blood from the head, neck, and upper extremities, and then the inferior vena cava, everything inferior or below that. So to show that blood is going from these vessels into the right atrium, we're just gonna draw some arrows that show that. From the right atrium, we know we have to ultimately get to the right ventricle. But if you think of the chambers as rooms, you'll know that, hey, we can't just go from room to room. We need a doorway. So what are the doorways? Those are the valves. So take your pen and let's draw our first valve. And that will be the tricuspid valve. This is also known as an atrioventricular valve or AV valve because it connects the atrium to the ventricle. I drew three lines here as a visual representation of the structure and to help remind us that the tricuspid is on the right hand side. So I'll take my highlighter and highlight this part because the highlighter will represent anything that is a valve. So keeping our blue pen, we're gonna go from the right atrium through this door into the right ventricle. Now we're in another room. 
so we need to go through yet another doorway to get out of the right ventricle. That doorway will eventually lead us to the lungs, which means we are going to go through the pulmonary semilunar valve. Now we're gonna write that up here in this area. So above the left atrium, just write pulmonary, and I'm gonna abbreviate SL valve. Make sure you know how to spell these words out. But just for time and space, I'm gonna abbreviate. So again, because that is a valve, I will highlight it. And then I want to show that the blood is going to go from the right ventricle into that pulmonary semilunar valve. Now, that, that root word pulmon reminds us of the lung. And so big picture, we want to think, where is this blood going to go? To the lungs. So at the very top of your page, I want you to write out lungs. And from there, we can take our pen and then draw our arrow showing where it is going. Now along the way, we have to label some vessels here. So I'm gonna turn my page like this so you can see what I'm writing. That first large diameter vessel from the pulmonary semilunar valve is going to be the pulmonary trunk. And you can think it's large around, kind of like a tree trunk. And then I just go like this to show me that beyond this, that vessel is called something else. The vessels will kind of branch and then they'll become smaller and smaller in diameter. So visually, it's kind of helpful to break that information up. So here, after the pulmonary trunk, we'll have the pulmonary arteries. Arteries, because that blood is being taken A for away from the heart to the lungs. Plural, because we have right and left lungs. So then we do that again. And then the smallest blood vessels we have will be the pulmonary capillaries. Once we get to the lungs, I like to color code it like so. Now, why do you think I'm changing colors like this? Because this is where gas exchange occurs. Okay, the major gas exchange to deliver oxygen to the rest of the body. So we want to remind ourselves that the lungs, the capillary bed of the lungs, is where we transition from deoxygenated to oxygenated. Now, big picture, where is the blood in the lungs going to go to? Well, it has to go back to the heart, and it will go to the left atrium. So to show that, we're going to draw a set of arrows showing that it's gonna go from the lungs back to the left atrium. Now I'm gonna tilt this again so you can see what I'm writing. And we're gonna have a capillary bed here. And what that means is that one side will contain the deoxygenated blood, and then we have that exchange. And then the other side, which are still capillaries, will contain the oxygenated blood. So we're gonna repeat that term, pulmonary capillaries, because these are those small vessels that now have oxygenated blood. Okay, and from there, 
those will grow in diameter, those vessels will become larger, and then we have the pulmonary veins. Why is it veins? Because veins carry blood to the heart. So the word artery and vein, the words artery and vein, really describe the direction of the blood flow, not necessarily what kind of blood is inside of them. So because this is taking blood back to the heart, we call these the pulmonary veins and plural because we have the right and left uh, uh, lungs. So from the left atrium, we're in a room, we need to get to another room. So there's another door here. And that door is called the bicuspid valve. Okay, bi for two. Now it refers to the number of these cusp shaped structures. It's also called the mitral valve. So that oxygenated blood goes from the left atrium down to the left ventricle. And hopefully you're seeing the pattern here. We're in our last room, the last chamber of the heart, which is the left ventricle. So we need to go through one more door, and that door is going to be called the aortic semilunar valve. We're going to write it up here. So aortic SL for semilunar valve. Get a little highlight. And then what we can do is we can take our pen and connect our two spots here. Okay. Aortic semilunar valve. Aortic because we're saying, hey, this blood is about to go into the aorta, which is the largest vessel we have in the body. Semilunar because that describes the shape. So the general shape of the aorta looks like this. We're gonna come up and around and down like so. So let's go ahead and label the different parts of the aorta. Turn my page. This part that is going upwards or superiorly, we call that the ascending aorta. Again, we'll break that up. This part here that looks like an arch is going to be the aortic arch. And again, we're gonna break that up. And then finally, the part that is going downwards or inferiorly, that is going to be the descending aorta. And the aorta is going to provide all the branches that end up going to all the different parts of the body. Um, so the aorta is a really important vessel because that oxygenated blood goes through here first and then to other parts of the body. So now you have this nice color-coded diagram that shows you quickly um, that we have four chambers of the heart, we have four valves, you can organize those. Um, we have two semilunar valves. We have two um, you know, cuspid valves. We have two atria, two ventricles. We can also say that the right side of the heart transports and carries deoxygenated blood. The left side of the heart transports and carries oxygenated blood. That change from deoxygenated to oxygenated happens at the lungs. 
and that the aorta is the main major vessel that is going to deliver that oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. And when all is said and done, you have a nice heart-shaped diagram showing cardiac blood flow. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that really helped you guys understand cardiac blood flow a little bit better. If you would, please hit like, subscribe, and don't forget to check out my Instagram page at The Anatomy Gal. See you next time.